On Tuesday, August 31st, the Ministry of Education held a virtual meeting, and that's with um, um, stakeholders in the education sector. Now, at that meeting, JAMS uh, Registrar um, went on to, um, Professor Ishak they went on to announce um, that the cutoff mark for JAM is no longer uniform. It, this has basically been scrapped. Um, he had earlier told different institutions to go ahead and decide on their own cut of max, and the lowest should be 120. You know, 120 should be the basic minimum. And different states, you know, um, different institutions um, developed and decided on their own cut of max, and they submitted that to JAM. So JAM has gone ahead to um, adopt this, to say this is now what, is, what it will be. University of Meduguri proposed 150 as its cutoff mark. It's Mandan Fodio University Sokoto proposed 140. The Pan-Atlantic University proposed 210. Um, University of Lagos, Unilag proposed 200. Lagos State University Lasso proposed 190. Covenant University Otta proposed 190. And Bayero University, Kano State BUK proposed 180. So these different cutoff marks that varies from school to school has been adopted. So no more uniform cutoff mark, unlike when before it's like 180 across all schools. Um, let's discuss this um, with a professor, or I beg your pardon, uh, a lecturer in the Department of Philosophy, Philosophy University of Lagos, uh, Mr. Dan Ikere. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you so much. So I want to get your initial reaction to this. Would you say this is good news, or is this a sign of a declining education standard in Nigeria? Yeah, thank you. I, 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 I will look at it from different angles. We, we need to understand very clearly that over the years, universities have actually always fixed their own uh, cut of marks. What JAM has been doing, as a matter of fact, is that JAM will simply fix what we can call the pass mark. Okay. The mark that will qualify you to either uh, take a post UTME, which uh, is the, the new, newly introduced post UTME, but with respect to cut off mark, is the investors that have always decided on cut off mark. And that is influenced by the performance per year. Now, this time around, they be saying that individual investors should decide on what it is. What, what I find it difficult to understand is whether they are saying that the university should choose the pass mark and as well decide on cut off mark. If that is the situation, beautiful. Then what would be the relevance of JAM? If at the end of the day, the universities are taking all the decisions with respect to everything admission, is JAM's responsibility just to conduct exam and maybe issue admission letters? That the universities can as well do. So, and one major effect that will come out of this is that some particular places can decide that their cut of mark or pass mark is 50. And we all go to the same national youth service, we all obtain the same degrees, we we'll go to the job market, it will shock you that the one that people enter the university with 50 will be the first to get a job. Okay, um, Mr. Danny Carey, that's why I was asking you at first that the fact that it seems a cut of marks are no longer uniform across schools. And that, secondly, these institutions decide their cut of max and it's been lowered. Do you think this is going to have an impact on you know, standards of education in the country? I think that point has already been made from my presentation because clearly you will find situations in which some places will decide that they are cut. Okay, look at the, the Unity Schools, for instance. You find out that the cut of max for some states, is as low as five, three, ten. Meanwhile, for some places, it is one at seventy, one at forty, one at thirty. So, what do you make of that? That's the same situation that is being introduced by Jam right now. And I think that the best would have been that, as long as Jam still exists as a body, it should fix the pass mark. The pass mark is not necessarily out of mark. So it is on the basis of that past month that selection programs can be done by the various universities for post-UTME. It's on the basis of the post-UTME and the general performance exam that individual universities will now pick 
they are cut off marks to, to admit students. But to say that everything should be decided by various universities, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure there's something going wrong somewhere. Well, um, you know, let's, let's go back at, you know, uh, look at the system the way it was run before. Um, Danny Carey, do you, do you think that, you know, the system, the way it was run, was, was uh, the best way to do it? Was the post-UME really, you know, very, very necessary, um, even after passing JAM? And also, um, will, with the way that it is currently structured, do you think that maybe that, you know, removes the need to write post-UME? Thank you. If I got you correctly, I, I, I want to believe that the post-UME is very necessary. It's very important because... At the end of the day, JAM will simply be a selection pool for the few that you seek for pursuit me, where you see, you know, those that have what it takes from those that do not. Now that will create a clearing, the JAM will like a clearing house, it will create that opportunity so that you'll be able to moderate in terms of numbers. Now, at that point, the universities will equally set their own exams to be sure of those who actually would jump themselves and pass. Although the challenge can still be, even with the position, you see some challenges here and there, but then at that level, it will be minimized. And it will be more specific. So I think that, yes, without being there, position is still necessary. Yes, it's still necessary. So that the universities can actually set their own standards at that point, you must recall that they are all not at the same level. All the universities are not at the same level. As we speak today, there are universities that are already looking at operating 60% postgraduate programs and 40% undergraduate. So we, we must develop along that line. And the best way to get it done is for as long as JAMS remains a body to be a clearinghouse where this selection process will start and ends with the universities themselves. Mm. Therefore, universities to just decide on both pass mark and cut off mark, uh, my, my worry might just eventually play out in no distant time. Okay, I, I just, to, just to clarify that um, Professor Isha Koloyode said that with this new arrangement, the minimum cut off marks for universities is 120 and 100 for um, polytechnics and colleges of education. And then these institutions went ahead to fix their own marks at, you know, above that figure, just to ensure that clarity there. Um, but I, I want to ask you about the quality of graduates that are being churned out of the Nigerian university system vis-a-vis um, -vis these cut-off marks that are currently in place right now. Do you think that the standards, you know, for entrance into secondary schools, into universities, should maybe even be increased? And do you think the examination should be more rigorous? Well, generally, you know, the way examination is done, as a matter of fact, it tests an aspect of the student, not necessarily everything. The idea is that what you have been taught, you have been subjected to examination to know whether you have any understanding of what has been done. The fact that people fail exam does not mean that they are useless, does not totally equally mean that they are totally dull. It's not unlikely that you might focus on a different aspect or whatever. Now, when it comes to issues of admission, it is critical that we look at it comprehensively. The Unity schools, like I said, will just be a typical case in point where they are all supposed to be Unity schools, where standards are supposed to be the same, and yet the entrance with these schools, you have various you know, levels, the various standards. Meanwhile, they are all coming out with the same certificate. Hmm. In some cases, tomorrow you will find out that these ones, even when they are not better than others, might be the ones who end up being directors here and there in government establishment. So my take is that as long as these things are the same level, the entrance examination that JAM usually I mean, conducts should be the clearing point 
and the standard should be the same. Even bringing this down to 120 is lowering the standard. Mm. And now, I'm not too surprised that that is happening. It is not necessarily because Nigerians are getting dull by the day, but it's simply because certain political issues are at play. So we must look at all these issues in taking this decision, and I think that JAM should have a rethink. Can you, can you be more specific regarding the political interest you mentioned? Regarding lowering well, that, the that, that, that one will be open to everybody to examine. There's nothing specific about it. What, what specific issues, again, are you looking at when the same exact people are doing? Some people are entering with three, some are entering with 50, some are entering with 150, and all the rest. What else do you want to look at? Hmm. That's a political interest. Otherwise, if all of us are going into a school, why should somebody from play a, a point, have a, a different trans, a, a score from my own who is coming from B and the other one is coming from C. The, the school is the same. Everybody should be measured by the same standard. All right. Um, Danica, what um, figure would you uh, recommend, you know, that JAM places as its cutoff mark? If you say 120 is too small, you know, would, would you suggest that, you know, they stick with 200? Exactly. Yeah, thank, thank you. You see, there has been a standard before. There has been a standard before. The, the, the state's own universities, the past mark used to be 180. And the federal used to be 200. Even at that, you see, find out that people who score 200 will still not find admission because of competition from other places. You discover that sometimes if 200 is a pass mark, the cost of my city be around 250. And for that 250, you find a lot of persons who are qualified. So to now bring it to 120, as these people are no longer scoring, you know, higher figures, it makes it so worrisome to me. So I think we should go back to the normal. We shouldn't because of any particular individual and lower the standard. Let those, must everybody go to universities. Let those who are qualified for universities go for universities. Those who are qualified for other institutions, other levels, should go there. At the end of the day, everybody is going to university. We don't longer have, you know, capable hands in other technical areas. We have so downgraded them because of the overemphasis on universities. Mm. Yeah, this is not meant for everybody. No, People don't no. we encourage everybody to to try. One one of the things you just mentioned no. is is uh, mm. the fact that you know even when people score two hundred, you know there's still no um, you know space for all of them to fit in. Um, so is this one of the fears that you have reducing the cutoff mark to one eighty or to one fifty? Um, it increases the number of people who would you know reach that pass mark and wouldn't be able to find a space in the university. Well, if, if I got you correctly, this idea of 120, for me, is just to create a wider pool where a lot of things will, will not happen. If with 180, 200, we still have a lot of people meeting up and some still being dropped because of issues of maybe space and, uh, you know, establishment or whatever, then why, why bring it down to 120? Why bring it out to what way? So in my thinking, in my thinking, uh, which is my current opinion, rather than lower the standard to meet the position of those who are not doing well, we should increase it for people to rise up to that level. People should aspire. People should work harder. So that the idea of, oh, okay, because we can't do this, then they will come to our level, should be buried. Mm. The university must be a, a, a place for standard measurement. Um, Mr. Kerry, according to a recent university ranking of you know, universities globally um, by Webometrics, it showed that no Nigerian university ranked in the top 1,000 at all. Uh, when we saw University of Ibadan, Covenant University, Abafemi Awolowo University, they were ranking 1,196, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So do you think that to, you know, prop up the Nigerian education sector and, um, you know, it's important for us to, you know, just like you've said, go ahead to increase um, entry standards into these universities. Thank you. Now, the issue of ranking of universities, for me, is, is, is the word of his own. I, I, yeah, it's in the word of his own because the parameters being used to do this judgment, sometimes 
can be can be questionable. Because when you look at the way things are taken, you want to find out if maybe Nigerians are doing well, then you come to Nigeria, you examine 10, 20, 30, even thousand, and these people hundreds of millions, you don't get the uh, the full uh, account. Now, if the standard is so low here, for instance, is it not Nigerian doctors and the rest that are going outside that are doing exploits? Mm. The school here, you know, from these universities that are not making their first hundred and the rest of them, when the graduates of this institution go out, they meet up with whatever, even, even surpass them. So the challenge we have really is a question of the environment. Not that the standard is low. So forget about whatever evaluation they are doing and the ranking and the rest. Yeah. Right. Yes, I agree that we still need to do more. We need to, you know, continue to put resources in place to ensure that we fortify ourselves, you know, to the point of producing the best. But the fact that we are not among the so-called uh, numbers they are ranking does not mean that we are nowhere. Yeah. All right. Um, I also wanted um, you to share your thoughts on the, um, you know, the space for growth, you know, of other institutions of learning. Um, like you mentioned, you know, not everybody needs to go through the university. There's polytechnics, there's other, you know, smaller institutions that exist uh, that uh, Nigerians can also learn very important life skills. Um, you know, is this also an opportunity to get into that discussion and see ways that we can better equip these other institutions, institutions of learning um, to be more valuable uh, to Nigerians? Well, if only it will, it will play out in that way, it would have been good. The challenge is that if they're not going to push these people to do the institutions we are talking about, we still have this challenge of everybody wanting to be in the university because the way we do things here, if you are not a university graduate, you, there seems not to be any value placed on the person. We don't look at what you are able to do, we look at certificates. So that's the challenge. If somebody from, with a, a higher national diploma, for instance, is in a particular establishment and there's somebody with a degree, and even when the one with higher national diploma is doing better, is the degree they are looking at. They are not looking at uh, production, they have uh, productivity, they are not looking at any of those things. The emphasis is on the certificate. So as long as uh, we will buy a certificate, you will continue to have that challenge. Why would I send my child to a polytechnic? When uh, after everything he has acquired, even when it's better than somebody with uh, a degree, you raise the degree higher. So it's going to affect so many things and it will continue to be like this until the trend is reversed by way productivity is, is equally consistent. So when you buy a certificate, you don't look at competence anymore. And I think that is part yeah, of but, the but, problem. But how do we having. change this? Danny Kerry, can you hear us? Please come again. I'm asking, how, how do we change this uh, in the Nigerian educational space? Okay. One, one way of doing it, because a lot of this, at the end of the day, boils out to the issue of employment. Yes. If at the end of the day, employers are advertising for degree holders, instead of those with competence and no consideration is given to those with the national diploma, higher national diploma, the rest, then we will consider that. But if the thing is made open, that they are looking for qualified hands who are capable of doing this kind of job. Then you allow everybody to come in, you test. But from the, the, uh, the advert, you have already limited so many people. In some cases, you even find out that they are asking for not only the degrees, they are equally asking for years of experience. So who, where do they gain the experience from to, to join your own? You know, so these are the challenges we are having. So employment is part of it. But if we can make it to, uh, open in such a manner that you are looking for competence, not certificates, just everyone who is, uh, is coming on board. So that will reduce, because already if you, if you, if you give the issue of uh, recruitment to your agency to do for you, they will go through all of this. But if you have set your standard in such a way that the person must hold a degree, then obviously you are going to limit a lot of things. 
and so many evil practices will continue to happen. Yeah. Oh, so I, everybody will fight to get a degree. Yeah, so I, from the I also point want of you to. Employment, we must begin to address these issues. Yeah, I, I also want you to, you know, to speak on um, the fact that I mean, ASU currently is threatening, you know, that they might, you know, go back to another strike, or they will have a meeting and decide on, you know, striking. That that meeting is meant to be held today, um, you know, well, and please. this is mostly because of the failure of government to, you know, fund institutions better, um, you know, equip universities better. Um, so we've had this conversation for a long time. When Nigerian universities, you know, don't seem to have the funding. You know, and the equipment. You know, he the last uh, time we spoke with the ASU president, he spoke about certain universities using um, stoves, uh, kitchen stoves, as Bunsen burners, and, and that's just an example of the level of infrastructure in universities. Um, now we are adding that to a situation where it's likely that people who scored 130, 140 in JAM will be gaining and in, um, entering into universities that are still poorly um, equipped. So is that a huge challenge with regards to the quality of graduates that eventually get into the labor market um, four years later? Yeah, as a matter of fact, you are as good, a workman is as good as his tools. So even what you have in the system, which is exactly what we have, is this kind of challenging case of infrastructure, then you will always have challenges, even with the outcome. A number of times, you know, the country, a lot of people don't understand this is for us to strike. You see, ASU members are committed intellectuals and academics. It's like, look at the fish. The fish can never be happy outside the water. Lecturers are never happy outside, you know, their working environment. So to go on strike must be the last resort. And the challenge again is that the question of those using tools and the rest of it, that might just even be the, the you know, it, it will be a, a better situation because you look at the issue of funding with respect to universities, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond, and until you fund your system, well, okay, does, does it ever bother anybody why our products will go outside? And outside that, they are doing fantastic. It's because of the environment. You know, so once you put the facilities in place, you're going to get the best out of it. We have the best hands. And our students are equally very brilliant. But when the, the, the workman's tools are so challenging, the product of that is going to have a challenge as well. So we must make sure that we don't leave this crusade to even as we alone. The entire country must continue to demand that the government funds education adequately. Absolutely. That is the only way you can get the best. The doctor was talking about we are trained in the schools. So until you put the best facilities in place, you are not going to get the best results. All right. Danica. Uh, so the, the, that's my take on that, really. All right. Uh, we'll say thank you for sharing your thoughts with us uh, this morning. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And we wish you a very interesting Friday ahead. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine. Absolutely. Uh, of course, uh, we had initially uh, uh, scheduled a, a, a conversation this morning on Zamfara and the current situation there, but um, it's been a little trouble getting in contact with our uh, guests, and so we're going to have to you know, move that interview to a later date and um, you know, maybe just share a little bit about it uh, this morning. And right after that, we're going to be talking sports. So take a short, a short break. When we come back, just a little bit on Zamfara. And uh, Wally Scott will be joining us to share his views on the uh, transfer window in the EPL currently. We'll be back.